I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 153, Taz Express. Released in 2000, this game was developed by Z2 and published by Atari SA. Now here's a game I'd never heard of, and many of you probably haven't either. That's because this game was only ever released in Europe and Australia. Pretty rare categorization for this console, I'd say. Looney Tunes was quite popular when I was growing up, so it's no surprise to see multiple games in that universe on the N64. Honestly, the Tasmanian Devil is such a weird thing to have in those cartoons. Without them, most people in the US would have no idea such an animal exists. I guess someone at Warner Bros thought it was cool enough to make a character out of, though. These games that were released late in the console's life cycle have generally been pretty solid, so I'm excited for this one. Let's get into it. When I turned the game on, there was no audio. Naturally, I thought something must be broken. Nope. For some reason, all audio for the game was set to mute by default. What on earth? Who does that? Anyway, the game has a single player story mode, so that's what we'll be doing to beat this game. It opens with some brief lore about how She-Devil is tired of Taz lounging around at home all day, so she made him get a job as a delivery boy. I'll be honest, I didn't realize Taz was in any kind of relationship. Then it goes into level 1, stage 1, Taz out back. It gave a small tip that I had to deliver a package, and if I was in doubt, I should look for a sign. Then I was into the gameplay. I saw the crate I needed to deliver right next to me. I picked it up, then Taz absolutely launched it into the sky. It comes back down after like 5 seconds, and that's some impressive power. It turns out Taz can't swim, and I lost some health. Not only that, one of the crate icons at the bottom disappeared. Those are how many times you're allowed to lose the package before you lose. The next time I threw it up, I didn't catch it. This put it in a damaged state, but apparently it's still good enough for the customer. Along the ground are several jacks, which are like coins in a Mario game. There's also food to heal, like this hot dog that's bigger than we are. There was a blue bar that was really confusing me, and a sign cleared it up. When you run for long enough, it fills up and Taz is able to spin. If you've seen the show, you've definitely seen him do this before. He just goes absolutely nuts, destroying everything in his path. Lots of terrain can be obliterated, and it's something I had to do a ton in this game. Later, I found a tile that heals the crate if it's damaged, as well as protects it with a metal shield. As long as it's here, nothing bad can happen to it. I think you can tell with the platforming here, the way Taz moves is quite odd. Building up the spin meter also changes Taz's movement speed. This leads to some frustrating situations where you get a burst of speed without expecting it, or you slow down and you aren't ready. Across here was a switch for a bridge, along with three red doors. I brought the crate into the first one, and it said I beat the level. Ah, huh, that was weird. It gave me a rating of good, showing I collected 42 out of 50 total jacks, or tokens as the game calls them. Next level was Taz Trials. It said I have to get the crate on the top of a mountain, but something called Beaky was going to try and stop me. Beaky was hot on my tail when I ran into a tile that launched me 5 trillion feet in the air. I think on my way down I collided with Beaky, cause that was jank as heck. Further down the path, there was a switch that built a nice ramp for me to carry this thing up. Beaky was constantly hot on my tail. Why is he trying to stop me anyway? What did I do to deserve this? You know what? You can have it. This job sucks anyway. Climbing a bit more, I found a purple button. This only stayed active if something was on it. Well, I could set the crate down, but old Beaky was surely gonna steal it if I did. Luckily, he's not so smart, so I had time to grab a rock that came from the lowered ledge. If you can't tell yet, one of the challenges with the crate is you can't jump or spin when you're holding it. Still though, it wasn't too tough just yet. I beat this level quite quickly. Only one door at the end this time around. The next level is Big City Small Taz. The cars here are... well, I guess you could technically classify this as driving. The view is like a bird's eye view the entire time, which I thought was quite annoying. This level also just didn't have music for some reason. Not sure if it was a bug or they just didn't put music in this stage. Man, when you build up that spin meter and really get going, Taz just runs so fast. I think I don't like the momentum build up as drastic as this game has though. But yeah, this level was pretty boring, just running through the streets in silence. 
The physics on these cars are so odd too. Who came up with this idea? It's so weird. I'll take this time to talk about the graphics and music. I thought the graphics were pretty solid and the game ran smooth enough. It was a PAL game being forced to run on my NTSC console, so any graphical issues could have been due to that. The animations for Taz were great too, I thought. For the music, it definitely sounds like something you'd hear in a cartoon. When the game gets frustrating though, it can really drive you crazy. The voice lines for Taz sound just like the cartoon too. You know, now that I think about it, Taz sounds almost identical to Korn's singer in that song Twist. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, it's a perfect match. So following the arrows in the road eventually led me to a flying saucer overhead. I couldn't make it do anything though. Tried standing there, throwing the box, setting it down, nothing. I got frustrated and walked away. When I came back, it suddenly worked. Uh, okay, that was jank. It shows a cutscene of Taz being zapped by a laser that makes him giant. Well, now we're on to Big City Big Taz. Now I could get revenge on these cars by blowing them up with my spin. Although, they're deciding to drive properly now for some reason. Man, when you're spinning, it's so hard to control. Taz tends to move in an arcing pattern rather than a straight line, so you're just constantly fighting with it. After bouncing around the buildings for a bit, I found the mothership high in the air. Taz jumped and grabbed it, spun around for a bit, and then got flung away. After hitting it like five times, it was stunned and I'd retrieved this ever so important package. A cutscene plays where Taz is abducted and brought to the planet Mars. At least that's what it looks like. Next level is X marks the Taz. Marvin the Martian was trying to stop us from delivering the package and he has laser turrets installed to stop me. They just kind of blast the crate and vaporize it. I found a switch to shut some of them off, but I couldn't press it safely. I performed some high level tech by tossing the crate up, jumping into it, and then hitting the button in the process. Super advanced stuff right there. There was this yellow gunk that slowed me down greatly. And of course, tons of turrets were scattered throughout. Apparently the button to shut this set of them off is literally invisible to the player. I got so lucky running into it like that. You know, there are a lot of questionable design choices in this game, and this is certainly one of them. With this, I could safely carry the package over the yellow stuff. At the safe spot on the other side, there was some weird enemy with a yellow stick. I couldn't hurt it or anything, so I'm not really sure what was going on with it. I decided to just ignore it and sprint across the next yellow area. Somehow surviving, I hit a switch, deactivating more of the turrets. I guess this is a temporary switch though, because they came back and destroyed the crate. What the heck, man? Am I supposed to find another invisible switch? Yeah, I couldn't figure out what was going on and I ran out of lives. It was a game over and I had to start the level over from the beginning. Next time, I made it across by pathing along the outside and I think I was out of range. Or maybe I just went faster, I don't know. On the other side of here, there was a yellow X on the ground and I threw it in a hole to open the door to Marvin's lair. I brought the package inside and the level was done. I think most of the struggles with timed sections in this game is just due to how odd the movement feels. Now it was on to Amazing Taz. It says this leads to the cannon room, my only way back to Earth. Since you can't jump with the crate, simple obstacles like these stairs can't be passed. Hitting the switch turns it into a package accessible ramp. So the theme for this level was to find the different colored keys, bring them to the locks, and open new sections. The difficulty was ramping up too. Getting a spin off on this narrow path to destroy the terrain was so sketchy. It feels so weird, not to mention you destroy the package while you're spinning. Good luck getting Taz to do what you want with a held item. Dude, I just want to put it in the keyhole. Why are you dropping it on top of the sign? I think this game just couldn't decide whether it wanted to be a platformer or a no jumping allowed game. Like one minute you're sprinting and jumping around, which is kind of fun. But then there's so many parts where you've got to carry an item and just wait on things. Choose either Mario or Captain Toad. You can't have both. There was this platform that launched my crate over a wall, then it let me go over. The sign on the other side said now I needed to find my crate. There's just a bunch of fake crates in this area, cause that makes sense. As far as I can tell, there's no way to identify which one is yours. The only way is to slowly throw it up these steps to the exit and try and see if it lets you leave. 
Either I got incredibly lucky or more than one crate works because the second one I tried was the right one. Thank goodness. Now we've got firing Taz. It said I'd need to complete five tasks before I could be launched from Marvin's cannon back to Earth. The first seemed to be pressing this button to arm the cannon. Then I had to flip some switches to bring the cannon out and open a door. These tiles that instantly put you into the spin state are so nice. Sometimes it's hard to build up momentum required, so I welcome these always. I had to destroy all the laser turrets in the area for something tedious. I had to set the crate on a conveyor and wait like 30 seconds for it to finally wind up in a compartment of the cannon. Then I had to place fuel for the cannon to fire, obviously. Next, I had to enter the navigation coordinates for where to shoot the cannon. It said the code was suspended from the ceiling, but I never saw it, so I just brute forced it. Only one button is right, while all the others reset the puzzle. I had to do five in a row, and that was lots of fun. I put in the drive with the coordinates into the cannon, and it was time for the final step, launching it. I brought some portable fire to the end of a fuse, and without warning it started burning. Oh god, I didn't realize I had to race the thing back. Luckily, it wasn't a tight timer at all, and I'd finally left Mars. Although, we didn't land anywhere near Tasmania. Looks like maybe Texas? So, uh, I'm not sure what happened here, but my save file got lost somehow. I blame it on the EverDrive forcing a European game to run on my North American console. But regardless, I had to replay all those levels again. Nothing I could do. I went in the middle door this time on level 1, but nothing different happened. A lot of things in this game are unknown to me. This is one of the few games I couldn't find a scan of the manual for online. Probably because it was never released in North America or Japan. If anyone happens to have a copy of this manual and could scan it for archive.org, that'd be amazing for preserving game history. I got the correct crate on the third try in that one level this time around, so maybe it is weighted to helping you find the correct one. Anyway, I got back to where I was and it appears we landed in New Mexico because it shows wily e. Coyote spying on me. This leads to the next level, Taz on the Run. Literally all this is is you have to sprint along the road to catch up to Wily. It seems weird to have Taz chasing him. I don't know how the Roadrunner could fit into this, but it probably should. Anyway, I caught up, spun into him, and took back the crate. Now we're on the next level, Taz in a spin. There were these spiky wheels moving on tracks, very dangerous for a package. Man, when they make you spin in a narrow pathway, it's just evil. It is just way too hard to keep Taz under control long enough to not fall off. Now there's these teleporting bounce tiles while I'm trying to spin to knock down some poles. Not only do I have to not fall off, I have to react to these things launching me. And there were cacti on the ground that interrupted my spin. I was getting frustrated. Finally though, I passed some bear traps in a red area and I was at the door. Good riddance. Well, now it was the level Taz on a roll. Apparently, I have to catch Wily e. Coyote again. This time though, the road was much more complex. Turning when you're running this fast is just not happening. Oh my god. Taz is out of control. I did catch up to him after a few minutes, but my spin didn't go off. Come on, that should have counted. It took maybe 10 minutes to take him down, and another level was beaten. Next level was Taz in a pickle. Wily e. Coyote has designed some catapults to try to steal my crate. I can make either Taz or the crate go on them, but the crate breaks if something soft isn't there for it to land on. My goodness, these things absolutely launch you. I then learned that you can push some of the catapults, and if a crate lands on another catapult, it won't take damage. Ah, oh, great. This sure seems like it's going to be atrocious. It's definitely not obvious where to place these things. Some of them have a big X on the ground, but not always. Felt like a guessing game. There was one section with some of the most awkward platforming I've ever done. These things are moving so fast and the camera isn't doing any favors. It was tough to tell where you would land in relation to them. After what felt like ages, I had the catapults in place to get the crate to the end. It was so tedious, but it got there. Just when I thought I was free, stupid Beaky showed up. What the heck, man? Why did he come back? I don't know what happened, but he just dropped it for some reason, so I left. Thank goodness. The next level is 3-2-1 Taz. I have to catch Wily yet again, and now there's tornadoes over gaps? Why do I have to do all this stuff? Just quit the job, Taz. It's not worth it. 
Luckily for me, it ended up being easier than the last one, despite Wily being on a rocket. The Coyote wasn't giving up just yet, as now we're on the Lookout Taz. Wily has placed these bouncing tiles all over the place, and they seemingly bounce you to a random location. I could place these green things on them to prevent Taz from chaining if he landed on one. Some of these areas had a lot of bounce tiles, and it wasn't clear at all where they would send you. Essentially one giant pick a path. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to be able to jump around this wall, but I did it anyway. Screw you, level designers. Like, look at this area. There are six bounce tiles, but only one of them send me over the wall. What is the point of this? It's not fun to just choose randomly and hope you're right in a platformer. It doesn't make sense. And then there's this area where all the tiles are blocked by terrain I had to spin to destroy. It's tedious. I think the game engine just doesn't have enough features to make interesting levels, honestly. By far the biggest sin of this level is where it spawns like 15 bounce tiles and only one of them takes you to the end. This isn't something where the wrong one just bounces you to nearby to try again. It takes you over an impassable wall so you have to go through the entire level to retry. It's just absurd. No one finds this fun. Why did they do it? Or this part where hitting the wrong one literally sends you to the start of the level if you choose incorrectly. I hate it. So, long story short, after well over half an hour of dealing with this garbage, I found the door to leave. And well, I'll just let you see what happened. Tell me this is just pick a block. Yes. What? We beat it or There's no there is no way. There is legitimately no way. You are kidding me. Oh my god. I had so many emotions here. Anger, comedy, frustration, shock. I just couldn't believe it. I had seen that cage so many times and I had no idea what it was for. But to make me restart the entire level from scratch, that is evil. I know some guy making this level was just giggling to himself as he made that trap. I hate you. The next time around, I made sure to move those green things out of the way before bringing the crate. Finally done. Of course, the game isn't over yet. Now we're on Wild Wild Taz, where we've made our way to Yosemite Sam's town. Why the heck did Taz give him the box? This game makes no sense, I swear. This level is a bit weird in that you can choose one of the buildings to enter and it doesn't matter which order you go. I went to the store and there were bombs with Sam's face on them. Also an image of a sleeping Sam at the bottom. Sure, let's just have this make even less sense. One of the fuses lit on the bomb so I had Taz eat it. This instantly put me in the spin state where I blew up another bomb. Yosemite Sam didn't wake up though, so that's nice. There was a pile of bombs in another room and all of them blew up at once. This caused him to finally wake up and he was livid. Taz got sent to jail and now I had to break out of there. Well, luckily Taz's spin is powerful enough to just destroy all the walls. It's real easy to break out, but you might already see where this is going. Anytime you wake Sam up, you get sent here and have to do that stuff all over again. I tried my luck at the hotel next where I bumped into a cactus falling into a pit. How in the world did that wake him up? Oh my god, this game just keeps bringing it on. I found a key behind the bar at the hotel and I had to drag it around to various doors to make my way through. Then there was this narrow pathway where the camera didn't want to cooperate whatsoever. I was ready to be out of this game at this point. Past this was the crate, but when Taz grabbed it, he was trapped in a cage and sent to jail. Thankfully, this wasn't another trap and it was supposed to happen. Apparently, even if you don't wake Sam up, you still have to beat the jail segment. The main section of the store had me juggling barrels to various switches to create a path through a big room. It was slow and uninspired. Once at the end, Taz went ballistic in the storeroom and blew it up. He was promptly sent to jail. Now the only building left was called Ditch Digger. Here, there were not only Yosemite Sam themed bombs, but also themed balloons that pop when you get near them. 
There was a room with these seesaw platforms and ones that turn into stairs. The momentum from Taz made it so hard to stop properly. Past here I popped a balloon and fell at the same time. It seems if you make noise twice rapidly then he just wakes up. Love it. There was a room with those seesaw things and balloons with spikes along the sides. I just took it slow and popped them one at a time until he fell back into the deep sleep. Taz found the crate in yet another storage room, but this time the weight squished him. Not sure how the package wasn't destroyed. Oh, and I went back to jail, of course. Now with those all done, Sam's house is open. It's absolutely massive. It's a maze of several hallways with buttons activating things and who knows where. In one room, there was a pad on the ground that shrunk Taz down to tiny size. This allowed me to pass under low ceilings and squeeze between bars. With this, I could pass the gate that had the key to it inside for some reason. Seems counterintuitive. This led to a contraption with hanging bells that would surely wake Sam up. The real question though is, why is this thing in his house? What purpose could it possibly serve? Then he had a rather impressive library with bookshelves that rotated to lock you out of certain parts of the room. The floor is tiled like a kitchen would be, but maybe he's not so good at house design. Once I was through that room, I was in an area with several rooms containing those blocking gates. Taz can only pick up the key when he's big, but he had to be small to fit in the room. I got stuck here for a while trying to make sense of it. It'd be nice if this part had a mini-map or something to help navigate. I don't know if this was a glitch or what, but it just let me push this box through the rails. I can't tell, maybe it's supposed to happen because of the camera perspective. Okay, I think it was definitely a glitch because I pushed it under another rail, except this time, way more janky. No, it can't. Oh, I can't get it out. This one does have collision. Oh, oh! <laughs> This let me reach a switch that opened several of those doors. Whatever the verdict, I was now able to grab the key and leave this maze-like section. Okay, even more useless than the swinging bells are these pinball flippers in the hallway. Genuinely, no way this has any use to him. Get rid of it. I finally made it to Sam's room and I'd retrieved my package. Surely this is the end, right? Well, not exactly. It shows a cutscene where Taz has apparently been carrying this crate for six months now, and he's in a poison swamp. This is the level Taz gets swamped, where I have to destroy evil trees by spinning on an awkward thin slope. I had to find a crank handle to insert into these holes to build bridges over the poison. With that, I could now make it to the best part of the level, invisible paths. The fireflies tell me where it's safe to move, and I'm sure I can trust them. Well, maybe not, but they're the best I've got. I swear, this game makes no sense, even this far in. It's like they hard-coded this one specific area to be easy to build up the spin meter. There was a crank hidden under this tree, it does not look like you'd ever be able to build it up here. Anyway, there wasn't much interesting besides that here, and the level didn't take too long. Still more to go, this one is Taz Down Under. I had to locate four kiwi eggs and place them near this ominous looking door. Apparently, Mama Kiwi lost them all and can't be bothered finding them herself. They weren't hard to find, and it only took a few minutes. Honestly, I welcome an easy level. I was so ready for this game to end. It was time for the final level, the Kiwi Arena. Mama Kiwi is mad at us for bringing her eggs back for some reason. I mean, I saved your children, but okay. So this boss has some safe tiles to place the package on, but she will get it out of the safe zone sometimes. Luckily those tiles heal the crate or this would probably be impossible. I wasn't sure how to damage it at first. Throwing rocks would make her fall on her back, but it wasn't seeming to help. I'm still not really sure what I did, but eventually spinning into her knocked her out. Uh, sure, I'll take it. I took the crate past her lair and it was over. It plays a cutscene showing Taz returning home and all the villains who were trying to stop me are there. What the heck, man? We finally get to see what's inside, and it's a swimming outfit? Yeah, so there are apparently these secret bonus levels hidden throughout the game. They expect the player to replay the entire game to unlock different outfits to allow you to play these bonus levels. The door you take in the first level determines which one you will get at the end. To doing that, I say... absolutely not. 
This game is not worth replaying three times just to find some bonus levels. We're calling this the any percent clear, and that is 100% completion. So yeah, that's about all there is for this one. Game complete. So yeah, there you have it. My journey to beating Taz Express. You know, I always feel like we missed out on these games that weren't available in the US, but this time, I have to thank Europe for preventing us from ever experiencing this garbage. The game had some cool ideas, but they were just executed so poorly. It seemed as the game went further on, the devs just wanted you to have less and less fun with it. Taz's physics are just not very good, and I think no one would care about this game at all if it didn't have a popular character in it. The music is decent, but it's very repetitive with not a lot of tracks in total. Most of the levels were just aimless wandering and trying to force the Taz spin mechanic where it didn't need to go. I play a lot of platformers, and I just could not recommend this one any less. It's boring, it's frustrating, and it just isn't fun. If you're in the US and feel like you want to play this, be careful. The original cart will not work on your N64. I'm not sure if there's a mod to force a North American power supply to run in PAL mode, but the N64 power supply is modular. The only way I'm sure it works to experience this game is either using an emulator or an EverDrive. Anyway, I gave it a 1 out of 10 for enjoyability and a 6 out of 10 for difficulty. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Have a sneak peek at the next game. There's 238 games on the list. It could be any of them. Let's see what we're playing next. 3, 2, 1, go! 179! What's that? Uh, we are playing Rocket Robot on Wheels. I have no idea what that is. But yeah, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. It helps the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one.